start the physics this class would be regarding um, the chapter in your book which is light reflection and refraction and we will be discussing all important aspects of the topic uh, considering that i have selected um, a good amount of questions in the presentation which i will be giving you um, uh, later in the class uh, later after the class and uh, during the class we will focus both on theoretical aspect of the topic and also on the numerical aspects from numerical i don't only mean questions based on the quantitative ability there are questions based on your theoretical knowledge also so we will be discussing uh, this topic in in holistic manner uh, with the uh, the respect to or or if i compare it with your grade uh, 10 examination and uh, if i look at this topic uh, properly uh, if i give you a little bit of hint about what kind of uh, questions that you get here from this topic it is varied in nature because there are different formulas so you get formula based questions and there there is extensive uh, uh, theoretical part also involved in this topic so mostly you get questions on the nature and size of image so you will be given either of the two mirrors or either of the two lenses and you will have to find out a distance would be given to you and you will have to find out what kind of uh, image would be formed and you will have to specify with suitable diagram that nature and uh, size of the image that is one kind of question second kind of question is uh, which which more or less comes most of the time is that uh, prism what is angle of deflection and then or you can get questions from um, um, rectangular slab and you will have to find out what is the deflection and uh, uh, what's the deviation and all those things uh, the easier questions are directly asked like what are the different laws of reflection and then laws of refraction and then probably you will get you you will get questions um, you can get questions uh, from um, um, what do you say from uh, numerical type of questions so which are basically uh, based on different formulas that we will be studying and deriving see one uh, very important part of the question uh, sorry of of this topic is uh, that um, none of the derivations are asked i have not seen any time that derivation is asked but you have to understand that uh, from where the formula is coming so if time permits i would definitely like to get into a derivation of different uh, topics um, different formulas and 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 depending on that we will be taking uh, numericals so um, i think uh, most of you have joined there are a lot of people to join now also but uh, i don't bother now they can join when they want and uh, let me share the screen with you and uh, then probably we can uh, I hope you can see the screen now and here we go so welcome again to this uh, session on light reflection and refraction and uh, we would be discussing this topic for next two hours uh, it's a comprehensive session for this particular chapter if you focus on this uh, chapter now in next two hours properly I don't think any other revision would be needed so uh, this particular session would help you out to get full marks in all the questions which will be appearing in your examination coming February so or or March whenever the uh, whenever the science paper that you are writing so um, I would be starting uh, with the uh, um, characteristics of light and if you look at uh, this particular uh, topic see this kind of question so uh, my basic objective in discussing these uh, this topic would be that 
what kind of question can arise from any particular subtopic that i am discussing so if i am discussing this uh, topic which is characteristics of light you there would be direct question that write two two properties of light or three properties of light or something like that and that kind of questions would not be more than one mark so don't expect anything else from this particular subtopic so there are different characteristics of light that we know first first and and, and the foremost which is most important important is that it is an electromagnetic wave the second one is it does not require medium from propagation so when the light rays uh, starts its journey from sun to earth in between in across the atmosphere there are different places where uh, or across that journey there are different places where vacuum is also there and some kind of atmosphere is also there so if it travels through all kind of i mean uh, all kind of mediums even if no medium is there it travels through it what is the speed speed in air or speed in vacuum is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second uh this is uh, this we will understand speed of light in different mediums in refraction we will understand this more properly uh, till uh, now we need to understand that speed of light is different in different mediums so um you will have uh, speed of light that is why i have mentioned here speed in vacuum speed of light uh, in air in water uh, sorry in water in glass it will change and it will reduce so uh, if light goes to denser medium its uh, speed reduces that's what i will tell till now then i'll explain it in refraction part then color of light is determined by wavelength so we know that a white light is made of Vibgur, seven different colors and um, it is determined by uh, lambda so lambda increases from v to r that we need to understand and and color of light will be determined by the wavelengths light travels always in a straight line if it change if change in medium light doesn't change frequency this is very very important while uh, speed and wavelength will change and speed of every color light is different in def in different medium except vac uh, vacuum so uh, what we need to understand from this point is that all these colors with pure their individual speeds would be different in different color in different mediums so when you will see when how this can be determined i have a slide uh, ahead for this if a white light is shown on a prism and uh, it is refracted on the two different surfaces of the prism triangular prism and if you see the refracted rays you will see difference all seven different colors emerging out of this prism so this this particular uh, experimentation shows that the speed of the light is uh, of different colors of light is different in different medium and in vacuum vacuum they travel with same um, speed so uh, this is the case uh, or these are the properties these are the important properties these are not the only properties of light but these are the important characteristics of light that, that i wanted to discuss if you have to write any three you write these three or you write first second and um, and this travels in straight line don't make it complicated so these three points will do anywhere and that will fetch you a uh, good enough marks so uh, this is uh, let's move to next slide and the ne next slide is uh, different type of uh, beams so uh, actually we study uh, light uh, in, in 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 different manners so uh, combination of different light rays if they are parallel to each other they are called parallel beam if from a point source the light rays are emerging out of it they are called divergent and if they are trying to finish at one particular point point merge at one particular point they are known as convergent beam now the question is that what happens when the light beam or any uh, 
light from any particular source strikes with an object so if light from any particular source strike with an object there are three possibilities which which can happen and these three possibilities are it can be absorbed by the medium so if if light rays falls on a wall or on a uh, wooden plank the wooden plank will absorb the light or it can be reflected what do you mean by reflect reflected reflected doesn't mean anything else apart from it getting thrown back from the object so if it strikes it comes back directly from or it 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 is thrown back from this particular surface and the third one is refraction refraction does refraction is a part of a process in which light goes from one medium to another medium so this second medium if light is going from one medium to another medium here in case of wooden plank if the light is going from air to the wooden plank wooden plank is absorbing it absorption means it doesn't let light particles or uh, come out of its another surface so if wooden plank is this thick and if the light is coming from here the light rays will never appear on this side it will get absorbed inside this wooden plank the refraction is completely opposite the other medium will allow this light ray to travel through it completely and if it comes if if there is another surface something like this it will come out like this and you will see that the light rays which is passing through or which is striking its top surface is coming out of the bottom surface it may be uh, with a different speed inside this uh, medium but the light surface will definitely come out so refraction means nothing but uh, light ray traveling from one medium to another medium that's the meaning of refraction a reflection means getting thrown back to the same medium so i am writing here this is thrown back to same medium so here we discuss about only one medium in case of reflection and here it is it passes from one medium to another so this is um, what do you say uh, this is about reflection refraction absorption of light when it falls on any particular object now let's move to something called laws of reflection so as we know that uh, reflection means bouncing back of light to same medium once it strikes the object or this object is called reflecting surface so i have written here reflecting surface what is the parameter of light getting reflected so it's generally it it generally gets reflected from glass objects and one of them is glass objects and it is mandatory that this glass object is uh, you can say for reflection it is necessary that this glass object is painted on one side 
or silvered on one side so that it cannot pass pass through the glass so if we have a plane mirror for that matter if i draw a plane mirror over here and uh, if you look at it from the perspective of a reflection so i draw here i polish it here on the other side now what will happen if there is a light ray or if i am standing here if this is me um standing in front of the object um if i am standing here something like this and uh, i want to know that how my image would be formed what is the process behind it to know this process or to apply the concept of reflection here it is important that we know laws of reflection so the first law of reflection tells me that the incident ray incident ray is the ray which is coming from the object reflected ray reflected ray means when the incident ray will strike this mirror it will this mirror will reflect this particular uh, um incident ray and after bouncing back whichever ray is getting bounced back the rays which are getting bounced back are known as reflected ray and the normal to the tangent a uh, normal to the surface so if i draw normal here to this surface uh the all these three this ref, uh, incident ray this reflected ray and normal to the surface they are in same plane and the most important point over here is that angle of incidence would be equal to angle of reflex, reflection so what is angle of incidence if i define angle of incidence angle of incidence is nothing but angle between the incidence ray and normal to reflecting surface at point of incidence this is it so this is angle of incidence this is denoted by the small letter i angle of refraction is instead of incidence ray this changes to reflected ray so you look at here this is my reflecting surface the incidence ray falls here i draw this perpendicular line which is normal to the surface at the point of incidence the angle between this normal and the incidence ray theta 1 is angle of incidence so theta 1 is equal to i here and the angle between reflected ray and to the normal of surface theta 2 is nothing but angle of reflection so this is denoted by small letter r so i is angle of incidence r is angle of reflection and both of them are equal in case of reflection so this is one thing you need to uh, understand now sometimes there may be a question which asks you that draw the diagram of reflection through a plane mirror so what how do you draw it so i want to show you this you draw this plane mirror and from this plane mirror you 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 put this line this line is a sign that you have painted it on the other side then you draw your uh, object your object suppose is something like this so you have drawn your object from the object what you will do is you will draw a perpendicular to the surface here suppose a ray goes like this so if a ray goes like this try to understand what would be angle of incidence so i here would be zero why i would be zero because incidence ray is also making 90 degree with the surface and normal will also make 90 degree with the with the surface so if you look at here if the incidence ray is along to the normal to the reflecting surface then the theta one becomes what zero this side will go and match with this so here i is zero if i is zero then r would also be zero r zero means 
it will come back in the same direction so i just draw these line like this and i will draw one more line like this which is normal to the surface which is parallel to this now my incidence ray would be something like this this is my incidence ray this is not at 90 degree i this angle is suppose uh, i so now i will have angle of reflection equal to angle of incidence so this angle will also be i so i am writing i is equal to r now whenever you are making an image please listen to this point very carefully very very important point whenever you make any particular image we need at least two incidence rays no. and with respect to those two incidence rays i need two reflected rays so wherever those two reflected rays would be cutting each other at that particular point i will have uh, my image so this ray will go here somewhere here it will cut here and if i draw this this will come like this so my image would be somewhere here now what would be height of my image if this image is h and uh, is if the height of uh, the object is h suppose this is a this is b and this is c this is d this is e and this is h dash now we need to understand that if this is r this is also r because they are opposite angles and i is equal to r this is 90 degree this is also 90 degree so all three angles are same if all angles are same then we know that the triangle would be what then we can prove that the tri triangle is uh, similar and if they are uh, sorry the triangle is congruent and if they are congruent uh, angle opposite uh, sorry side opposite to equal angles would be equal so i and r are equal opposite to them the sides are a b and uh, d e so their lengths would be equal so h would be equal to h dash so that is your uh, uh, calculation here so if you understand this now let's move to because uh, reflection uh, is not only related to plane mirrors reflection is also related to spherical mirrors so if it is related to spherical mirror let's understand what is spherical mirror and then we will move to image formation by spherical mirror so see here spherical mirrors uh, as you can see here there are two kinds of a spherical mirror one is concave one is concave there is some kind of noise can we uh, stop that thank you uh, so there is some uh, there are two kinds of concave uh, spherical mirror one is concave which is this what do you mean by concave uh, painted on the cave side or painted on the other side if the name oh. is cave, so, yes so there's a doubt in the comment box okay i'll clarify it What is the doubt? So it's asked by Shreyas if for, for a brief description of um... for brief discussion of diffraction. So I'm I'm coming to those topics later. This this uh, class is only for reflection and refraction. So. Uh, those topics would be covered later so this is only for reflection and refraction so uh, those things would be covered don't worry about it in different class so what i am trying to say over here is that the names of mirror are kept looking at where the reflection is happening if reflection if the incidence rays are falling on the cave side of the spherical mirror what do you mean by spherical means these glasses have been taken from a sphere 
So if a sphere is something like this, and I take out a part of this particular um, um, sphere, and then paint it on one side, it converts into a spherical mirror. So uh, if the painting is done on non-cave side, it so it means that you are leaving the cave side for the reflection. And the, if the cave side is left for the reflection, it means that if the light uh, uh, incident ray falls on the cave side, it is concave mirror. And if it falls on the other side, if the cave side has been uh, um, polished, then it means that it is a convex mirror. Now, what are the different important terms? So different important terms uh, of any particular mirror is uh, first one is aperture. So the aperture over aperture is nothing but I'm writing here. Please, if you want to write with me, write it down. Aperture means portion available for reflection. So first one is portion available for reflection. So if you look at here, the portion available for reflection is MPN. So it is nothing but MPN. So this is it. The second one is pole. Pole is nothing but geometric surface. Sorry, geometric center of reflecting surface. Second one is center of, so here what is the pole? Pole here is P. So if you look at the reflecting surface, the midpoint of it, which is the geometric center, is denoted by P. Now the third one is center of curvature. What is center of curvature? Center of the sphere of which the mirror is a part. So could you define aperture properly? Aperture is the portion available for reflection. So if this is the mirror, what portion is available? From this point to this point, this is the complete portion available for reflection. So this particular portion is known as aperture. So aperture of this spherical mirror is, suppose this point is M and this point is N. So this, this complete peripheral MN is known as aperture. Is it fine? Did you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Center of curvature is nothing but center of a sphere from which mirror has been taken. So uh, if mirror has been, if the sphere is something like this, and mirror is a part of it at, and its center is over here. So this particular point C, which is the center of the sphere from which this mirror has been taken out, is known as center of curvature. Then there is something called principal axis. Principal axis is nothing but a line joining the center of curvature and the pole. So this line PC is known as principal axis. Then we have radius of curvature. So length of PC is nothing but because p is a point on the circumference of the sphere and and c or or on the surface of the sphere and c is center of the sphere so distance between the distance between two points uh, or distance between center and any point on the surface of the sphere would be radius so which is pc in this case so pc is nothing but radius of the curvature and what is principal focus so principal focus is very very important and look at here that's why i have taken this diagram to explain you what is principal focus principal focus is nothing but if the lights are or 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 there are parallel beams so you, you see here both for the case of concave mirror this is your concave mirror and this is your convex mirror both for the case of concave and convex mirror there i have taken combination of parallel beams now wherever after reflection wherever these uh, reflected rays of par incident parallel beams wherever they meet each other that particular point is known as principal focus 
so the parallel beams i can write that the parallel beam beams after reflection converges in case of con concave mirror here see they are converging or diverges in case of convex mirror at one particular point one point that particular point is known as focal point now what is focal length so distance between and, and, and focal point is denoted by f capital f so distance between pole and focal point is known as focal length and it is denoted by small f now try to understand whenever you are measuring distance from the lens all the distances are taken along the principal axis from the pole so the initial point or from or, or the reference point with which I measure all the distance is the pole of the spherical mirror so if I have to calculate the center of curvature it would be PC if I have to calculate focal length it will be PF so all the distances are measured from the point P this is a very important point here that you should be noticing now so this is how uh, different terms related to a spherical mirror is uh, defined i hope you understand these things uh, the next point is uh, cartesian sign and then i'll go for rules for constructing images so uh, i'll tell you what are the different rules for uh, uh, <coughs> constructing images first let's understand the cartesian sign of convention so uh, whenever you want to find out that uh, if i keep an object in front of any kind of mirror what kind of image would be formed uh, you need to place the object on the left hand side of the mirror so the object is always placed to the left 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 side of uh, left of the mirror this implies that the light from the object falls on the mirror from the left hand side second thing the distances parallel to principal axis are measured from the pole of the mirror which i was just discussing all the distances measured to the right of the origin are taken positive while those measured to the left of the origin are taken negative so what do you mean by uh, positive x-axis and positive uh, negative x-axis this pole is actually origin because you are calculating or you are measuring all the distances from here and this pole is considered to be origin if you go towards the right hand side of the pole so that particular thing is positive that distance is positive if you go on the left hand side of the pole that is negative there is another way to define it if i am keeping an object on the left hand side and the incidence ray would be falling like this so you can always say that the distances measured in the direction of the incidence ray i am writing here here the distances measured in the direction of incident ray is positive and opposite to it is negative so if you are going in this direction it means that you are going in the opposite direction to the direction of incidence ray hence uh, in this direction look at the arrow in this direction the distances would be negative if you are going in this direction you are going in the direction of the incidence ray hence the distances measured would be positive so actually point 3 and the point which i have written on 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 the board is actually same one and the same so question number and why i discussed because in most of the books that you will be studying what i have told is given and not not exactly what uh, you are studying here distances measured perpendicular to the uh, uh, to and above the principal axis so you know that if this is x axis this would be positive y and this would be uh, negative y and this is just convention 
so by convention it is it is like this so this is positive above x above the principal axis below the principal axis this is negative Dins, uh, uh, distance is measured perpendicular and below to the y axis is taken as along the y axis is taken as negative so this is this particular thing if if a question asks you that what is the cartesian sign convention for reflection you need to write these five points these are the five extend five points extensive so you don't need to write anything else if you write these five points you get to get your marks fully now what are the different different rules for constructing images so i have told you that for construction of image two reflected rays are required in case of refraction when we will be studying refraction two refracted rays would be re required here we are studying reflection so two reflected rays would be re required at least now if i need at least two reflected rays it means that i need to have two incident rays which incident ray there can be infinite incident rays which would be falling on the reflecting surface which incidence ray out of those infinite rays to be selected so that my image construction is is easy and it it, it does not create any problem for me uh, it's very very simple and what is it try to understand the first rule is if the light ray passes through the center of curvature this is the first one through the center of curvature then there is no reflection oh sorry there is no deviation it gets reflected in the same direction or, or in in direction opposite to the incidence ray so try to understand if this is my center of curvature what happens we understand that radius is always perpendicular to any particular point on the surface so if i draw this line from this center of curvature this it means that this is 90 degree so if a light ray is coming in this direction it means that the angle between the light ray and the normal to the point of incidence is actually zero so i is equal to zero if i is equal to zero r is zero r is zero means it will get reflect reflected in opposite direction exactly opposite direction to the incidence ray so it means that there would be no deviation it, it will be coming in the direction going in or deviation of 180 degree you can say so you will not be able to separate out uh, the two rays and second thing is second thing is that any ray parallel to the principal axis after reflection we know that if light beam is parallel after reflection it converges or diverges on focal point so it will get converged or diverged on the focal point the third one is that any particular light ray passing through the focal length after reflection will become parallel to the principal axis so this is nothing but actually the same thing that if if it is going in this direction the reflected ray would be like this if incidence ray is like this then the reflected ray would be parallel to the principal axis why because i is equal to r so it has to uh, prove it's this is nothing but principle of reversibility that i would be discussing in the next slides so these are the three different rules which we would be taking care of or 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 with the help of these three rules we will be finding out what kind of images would be formed depending on different distances of the object from the spherical mirrors so let's finish those things off here are six conditions so in these six conditions i have taken both uh, the position of the object if the position of, of the object is infinite what does it tell you if the position of the object is infinite all the rays falling on the reflected ray would act like a parallel beam and if act acts like a parallel beam it will get uh, converged on the focal length so it it is getting converged on the focal length so you 
look at here the size of the object would be highly diminished it means that it will be a point it will be real and inverted then if it is beyond c you look at here condition b so beyond c means between infinite and c so i am drawing these two lines one is going here passing through parallel uh, uh, focal length uh, fo uh, focal point and and one going through center of curvature so then returning again 180 degree here the image formed you look at here is nothing but diminished real and inverted if you go through all these points if it is at c the image would be formed at c only and real and inverted and of same size if it is between c and f look at here so image would be real inverted but the height of the image would be more than the height of the object this is called condition of enlarged image again if it is at f so i know that uh, if uh, any particular light ray passes through f after reflection it becomes parallel to the principal axis and hence they all you look at here they are all uh, going through f something like this center of curvature and they'll never meet each other so highly enlarged they meet at infinite real and inverted if any particular object is kept between the uh, pole and the focal point then the virtual what do you mean by virtual image virtual image means the reflected ray does not mean actually they appear to meet at certain point they in in reality they never meet each other so real image means remember this real image means reflected or refracted rays meet at points in reality virtual image means they don't meet in reality but appear to meet at one point so this is it so these are the different conditions in which you will have to find out now this particular slide is very very important these six points i can make you sure that these six uh, points and the upcoming two points at least you can ex uh, expect one question from here every year out of these eight different uh, figures you will have to draw one and you will have to write uh, the position of image size of image and nature of image. So this is for the convex mirror uh, There are only two types if it is at infinite so you know that the Light beams would be parallel to the principal axis and they appear to be uh, Meeting at the uh, focal point hence virtual and erect image is formed which is highly diminished because it is a point size image and between pole and infinite anywhere you put you see that a diminished image which is virtual and erect would be formed here so for virtual and erect there are only three cases the two cases are in convex mirror which is infinite and between pole and infinite anywhere in case of concave mirror if a virtual image is formed you need to know that the distance between the object and pole distance between object and pole is denoted by letter u and distance between image and pole is denoted by v so u is or distance is between pole and focal length so if between f and p there is an object in case of concave mirror a virtual erect and uh, diminished Im image would be uh, uh, sorry enlarged image would be formed in case of uh, concave mirror here in both the cases you will have diminished image here in case of concave mirror you will have virtual erect and enlarged image so you need to understand these eight points properly if you understand these eight points if you remember these eight points i can guarantee that at least one question would appear from here now uh, um, excuse me you, sorry is there any doubt
Yeah, uh, it's yeah, me, Charan Sir. Yeah, uh, like, uh, uh, can you use, uh, like, just like, uh, the concave mirrors and convex mirrors in real life? Sorry? I'm can not you getting your question. The applications of concave mirrors and convex mirrors in real life. Like, uh, concave mirrors, like, some, when the object is at infinity, it's used in a cinema theater or in a projector or something like that. So actually concave mirror and convex mirror, uh, we both use these kind of mirrors. Uh, one thing that you need to understand that the convex mirror is diverging in nature. So you look at here, the reflected lights are getting diverged. Is it okay? And the concave mirror is actually converging in nature except one case. So looking at this uh, diverging and converging effect of con uh, concave uh, and convex mirror uh, different uses of concave and uh, convex mirror are there in real life so uh, if you uh, uh, look at the mirror used in in vehicles uh, what kind of mirrors are used in vehicles so uh, you look at here uh, for concave mirror because it is converging in nature if you have to look at any particular uh, uh, point very minutely for that matter if there is some problem in your in your teeth and a doctor uses torch over there what kind of mirror is that that is concave mirror for saving uh, uh, shaving we use uh, concave mirror so inspection then for the sake of uh, shaving then large concave mirrors would be used to concentrate because this is a converging kind of mirror to concentrate sunlight at 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 one point in order to produce heat so if you are able to uh, produce he uh, sorry concentrate sunlight at one particular point uh, you will uh, see that uh, a, a large amount of heat is generated and 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 this th this is a natural source of um, uh, heat uh, being concentrated at one particular point now let's go to uses of convex mirror so uh, uses of convex mirror you 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 can use it in in cars so the rear view mirrors in the car are actually convex mirror why because it is diverging in nature so you can you can cover more area to look backwards then in your sunglasses you don't want uh, concentration of uh, light at one particular point at your eye so it gets uh, dispersed in dis different directions so in some glasses you use convex mirror in rear view or uh, mirrors in cars you use convex mirrors there are different depending on whether you want divergence or convergence there are different pieces of uh, spherical mirrors now uh, this particular formula I am not deriving you need to understand that um, so there's a lot of noise. microphones on silent. A relation so between. Repeat what are you Which one? So like which before one? the in the see, previous uh, slide in the class. The convex, the usage of convex. Uh, see the usage of concave mirror is for inspection. So torch for that matter, then sh uh, shaving, cleaning, wherever you want. Convex mirror is diverging in nature. So rear view mirror of cars your sunglasses. So this is the uses. Now relation between R and F, this I am not deriving. Nobody will ask derivation of this. Though I derive the other formulas uh, looking at the time, uh, whatever time we have. So uh, R would be equal to 
2f so always remember that in case of suppose this is a concave mirror and this is center of curvature c this is the focal point f and this is the pole p then understand that p c is always equal to 2 times p f or you should understand that focal point is in exactly at the midpoint of uh, the distance between the center of curvature and the pole so uh, relationship between these two are r is equal to 2f or f is equal to 2 by r now let's go to another topic which is um, uh, known as mirror formula now this is mirror formula in mirror formula we have v minus u uh, uh, 1 by V uh, plus sir. 1 by U equal to yes sir for uh, Hello. In, in the magnification formula yeah in the magnification I'm formula magnification the next I left it purposefully once I derive the uh, mirror formula from there I will take magnification formula is it okay yes sir I was just asking because it was in the previous slide okay no issues uh, absolutely no problem i have left it purposefully i'll i'll, I'll, I'll do it here so uh, try to understand when we uh, go to derive this formula first we need to note it, know that what is v u and f so f is nothing but focal length u is distance between object and the pole v is distance between image and the pole <coughs> so if we look at here um there are uh, different triangles over here so let me take triangle a a p b and triangle a dash b dash and p so these two triangles are and i'll prove why they are um, um, similar so if you look at here if I take triangle a b p and triangle a dash b dash p this is 90 degree me, and yes so your previously you told in sunglasses we use convex mirror yes um, but in convex mirror only one side uh, like one side is polish and another side is there for reflection but how how will that reduce the concentration of sunlight in our eyes i'm i'm i'm, I'm saying sun do you think sun glasses are polished sunglasses are not polished actually sunglasses are of different color and if you look at the formation of the sunglass the sunglass is something like this so uh, actually the filming of the sunglass is actually done on the inside so that the light rays will fall from here the sunlight will fall from here and it will get diverged from this side are you understanding so the filming yes. is done on this particular side so that the divergence happen at the outer surface over here are you understanding yes sir okay, okay so it's a virtual and direct image then yes actually i our eyes also make the same kind of image so look at here when i discuss human eye in the next class in which i will take other topics also like diffraction and all so actually optics is a bigger topic in which uh, i have i have separated in two parts one is uh, reflection and refraction and the other part is the other phenomenon the wave phenomenon of light and uh, and human eyes uh, so uh, those things would be covered in a uh, different uh, lecture so i'll tell you how, how the exact image is formed in the brain there i'll discuss it is it fine okay so look at here these two are similar because this angle all three angles are are are, are same actually so this is this if this is i and this is r i is equal to r this is 90 degree this is 90 degree so you can write that ab divided by a dash b dash is equal to pb divided by pb dash and uh, this is nothing but so if you look at pb dash pb dash is equal to nothing pb is equal to nothing but 
formation of uh, uh, or place of object so this is minus u and pb dash is where image is getting formed so this is minus v so it is nothing but u divided by v so ab divided by a dash b dash is equal to u by v similarly i will take another triangle so that triangle would be abc and triangle a dash b dash and c so these two triangles are also similar because these two are opposite angle this angle is 90 degree third angle has to be same when two angles are same so i can write that ab divided by a dash b dash is equal to bc divided by b dash c so bc is nothing but pb minus pc divided by uh, b dash c is nothing but pc minus uh, pc minus b dash c uh, b dash p so what is pb pb is nothing but minus u and pc is nothing but r which is in negative direction so minus minus r divided by uh, pc so pc is again minus r and uh, minus b dash p is nothing but v so minus minus v so this gives me r minus u because minus minus is positive divided by v minus u so if you look at here a b divided by a dash b dash is u by v here and a b divided by a dash b dash is r minus u divided by v minus u so if you put u b is equal to r minus u divided by v uh, sorry this is v minus r so this is v minus r and if you cross multiply it so you get u v minus u r is equal to r v uh, um, minus could you u. just check the chat box for a minute we have a few doubts okay fine i will uh, check it now 2 u v comes out to be r u plus v so you bring on that side 2 by r is equal to u by u v plus v by u v so this gives me 2 by r is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v and 2r can be written as 2f so 1 by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v one second i am just checking the chat box what is there in the chat box Shreyas S, the question that you are asking, that how sunglass is a con convex mirror. First of all, it's not a lens, it is a mirror because it's, if you look at, you, you take a sunglass and try to look at the construction of the sunglass, it's so it's it's it has been taken from a sphere where there is only one cover something like this something like this this is how the glass now it's is the same material here there is a filming done over here on the glass it is not painted so that you can't see there is a colored film or or black film or blue film through which light ray cannot pass So what happens over here? This is particular, the, the divergence happens from this particular surface. Why do you use sunglass for that matter? Why not a? Because it's just a filming. It's just a filming. So, but and how is it? it is I am saying it is convex. Lens, it, right? is, it is. It is bulged on the other side. It is bulged on the other side, and light comes here and and diverges here. How do you see your image? Try to understand. How do you see your image in the plane mirror? 
Sir, image no, formation uh, has nothing to do with the thing is uh, listen, listen let me, let yes, me explain sir. this image formation has nothing to do with with the polishing image formation happens because the refre reflected uh, lights would be appearing at that particular point so for eyes the image formed by this particular mirror will act as the object and i will make a image of image with respect to image formed by this convex mirror so even if i am filming it here it doesn't mean that image would not be formed and i can't see anything you look at here in case of plane mirror i have done this particular polishing if polishing has been done image is not formed image is formed light will not enter directly first whenever in front of the eye look at here actually i am forced to discuss how human i make image which i want to discuss it in the next class when i am discussing human eye what happens is when you put a lens forget about uh, most of us use uh, eye lenses or 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 some kind of a spectacles specs what i am trying to say is 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 that when we use this spectacle what happen first the light falls on this spectacle this is a lens this lens will make an image this image made by this lens will act as an object for the eye now the, the image made by this particular lens is acting as an object for this eye now this image would be seen by the eye as an object and i will make image with respect to image made by this lens similarly here in case of convex mirror which is diverging which is the sun glass image would be made by this particular eye lens, this this particular spherical uh, mirror which is convex i will look at the image made by this spherical mirror and then i will make image with respect to image made by this spherical mirror so that is the nature of formation of image and that is why this question is coming and that's why i was telling you that let me not explain this this now because in human eye when i am discussing human eye and with respect to lenses when i discuss different uh, um um when i uh, dis discuss different lenses and myopia and hypermetropia i let you know that in myopia why concave lens and uh, and, and 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 hypermetropia uh, uh, why con convex lens and all those things so i let you know that so don't worry about that uh, in this in 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 this class let me discuss what i am discussing so i have done this particular uh, 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 formula now uh, somebody was asking me okay no issues if you keep on asking doubts but wherever i am saying that i will discuss it please trust me i am going to discuss it so size of object you look at here i have written magnification formula size of image divided by size of object so it is defined something like this size of image divided by size of object which is nothing but here a dash b dash divided by ab and a dash b dash is also equal to pb dash divided by pb now pb dash uh, or, or um, try to understand this this is if i take this as hi and ab as ho we write what this h i is actually negative so we write minus v divided by minus u and this h i is negative so this negative negative gone h i by h o is equal to minus v divided by u are you understanding this yes or no illa yenu illa actually adu sari madbek ne naale now naale please please put your microphones on silent
now uh, there is something called uh, refraction of light so let's move to refraction of light and let's finish it fast so that we can solve few questions from there so guys uh, let me know in the chat box if you have any further doubt about convex mirror how the image is formed if there is any doubt let me know in the chat box I'm not getting anything so so probably there is uh, no doubt here and there so that's fine actually um, okay so now let me go to refraction of uh, light refraction of light is nothing but I've already explained passes of light from one medium to another medium from one medium to another medium now what is this so there is something called optical density an optical density is decided by ability to control the speed of light now what is the ability to control the speed of light please uh, look at here if speed in air vacuum is 3 into 10 to the power 8 then if any particular medium reduces it from here then it is called denser with respect to vacuum or air so I am writing only air so this optical medium rarer or denser is with respect to this is respective with there with respect to other medium for glass a uh, refractive index i'll explain what is a refractive index is 1.5 for what a uh, water it is 1.33 what does it mean this is 3 by 2 this is 1 by 3 with respect to what this is with respect to air and this particular uh, with, with this particular these particular numerical values are have no value no meaning until and unless i say that these are the measure of their optical density with respect to air if i say only 1.5 and don't say with respect to air or vacuum they have no significance so they are respective values so if I uh, look at these values, then what happens? It's it actually it 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 basically tells me that glass is a uh, glass has higher refract refractive index uh, and water has lesser refractive index. It means that with respect to water, glass is more dense, or glass is denser with respect to water, and water is rarer with respect to glass. So rarer and denser has meet, meaning in relative sense it does not have any absolute sense uh, here so whenever we are discussing whether an optical medium is rarer or denser we need to have a reference point now if medium one is air and medium two is glass so uh, i know that air is rare and glass is denser so there are two things one is the, which I am discussing about direction of bend, bending the rule is that when rarer to denser rare to dense refracted ray refracted uh, ray will bend towards the normal 
and denser to rarer it will move away from normal i'll again explain it with numerical values also so till now you you need to write this after this let's move to uh yes ask me your doubt okay so if you are not asking the doubt here it is so uh, sir um, yes so basically if it goes from a rarer to denser medium it will move towards the normal so can you try that again a rarer to rarer to dense towards the normal and dense to rare away from the normal is it fine okay now look at here what are the different laws we studied the law of reflection now it's time for law of refraction so law of refraction the first point is same incident ray refracted ray and normal to the point of incidence lie in same plane uh, and there is something called snell's law snell's law tells me that a refractive index of a medium and sign value of the angle formed between the ray and the normal or you can say multiplication of multiplication of refractive index of a medium and sign value of the angle formed between a ray and the normal is constant so it's the definition which i am giving is absolutely different from you have studied and and and, and remember it this way so what i'm saying is mu sin theta is constant and i'll give you the definition of the book also so what is this value what is this value for air so it's mu of the air multiplied by sin i and what is this value for glass so mu of the glass and what is the angle formed here sin r now this is constant it is always same so this is equal to k this is equal to k it means that mu a sin i is equal to mu g sin r so i can write that sin i divided by sin r is equal to mu g divided by mu a mu g by mu a is nothing but refractive index of glass with respect to air and now from here books gives you uh, books give you definition that snell's law is such that ratio of sign value of incidence angle and refracted angle is equal to the refractive index of medium in which the light is entering so this is the actual definition which is giving given in your in your book so refractive index of the medium is ratio um, sorry uh, snell's law is uh, one second so snell's law second law of snell's is ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine sign of angle of refraction is constant for a given pair of media and for a given color of light and this is equal to mu this mu is nothing but a uh, refractive index now what is refractive index refractive index is nothing but ratio of write down if you want to write down i'm 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 telling uh, i'm orating it refractive index is nothing but uh, a refractive index of a me medium is ratio of velocity of light in air so velocity of light in air which is denoted by c divided by velocity of light in that medium in medium 
which is denoted by v so it is nothing but mu is equal to c by v and this is called absolute refractive index what do you mean by absolute refractive index absolute refractive index is nothing but refractive index of any particular medium with respect to air and definition is refractive index of any medium is the ratio of velocity of light in air or, or vacuum to its velocity in a given medium so if i am not asking you absolute refractive index if i am asking you reference please don't talk if i am asking you uh, um, a refractive index of one medium with respect to other medium you need to write that refractive index of reference medium divided by refractive in um, sorry um, you understand here if this is medium one suppose this is water and this is air uh, sorry uh, this is glass so refractive index of glass with respect to refractive index of water i have to find out so that would be equal to velocity of air in velocity of light in in water reference velocity always goes in the numerator divided by velocity of light in glass so this is a refractive index of glass whichever one is in the denominator refractive index of that has been calculated so this is refractive index of glass with respect to what water so for whichever one i have to find out refractive index i write it on the right hand side and the reference medium is written on the left hand side so refractive index of glass with respect to water is nothing but velocity of light in the water divided by velocity of light in the glass it can also be calculated like this so if velocity of glass with respect to air is c divided by velocity in glass and velocity of what uh, refractive index of water with respect to air is c divided by velocity in the water so veloc uh, refractive index of glass with respect to water is nothing but absolute refractive index of glass divided by absolute refractive index of water and a mu g is nothing but c by v g and divided by so i can write that vw divided by c so c and c gone vw by vg so you see here i have written here vw by vg so you can write it in any way so absolute refractive index is nothing but velocity of light in air divided by velocity of of light in that particular medium so this is how you have to uh, define things i hope you are understanding everything i can see some murmuring uh i will have to please don't take it otherwise but if this is not stopping then guys sorry i have to block a few of you who are talking continuously now refractive index of two mediums with respect to each other so uh uh for glass and air suppose it is uh, this is c by vg and suppose for water it is c by vw so refractive index of glass with respect to water is uh, ref absolute refractive index of glass divided by absolute refractive index of water c by vg into vw by c so this and this gone it is vw by vg so that's how you have to do it now what is principle of reversibility principle of reversibility is nothing but uh, so look at here if a ray uh, of light travels from medium 1 to medium 2 along a certain path it retraces the path when it travels from medium 2 to medium 1 uh, and then we can say that the path of the light is reversible in nature so try to understand here if it is going in this direction from medium 1 to medium 2 so i write mu 1 sin i is or theta 1 let me write this as theta 1 so mu 1 sin theta 1 is equal to and this suppose is theta 2 mu to sin theta 2 now if it it is coming in this direction if it is going in the opposite direction so if this becomes mu to sin theta 2 in this here and mu 1 suppose this angle becomes theta 3 here so mu 1 sin theta 3 now this and this are equal so mu 1 sin theta 1 is equal to mu 1 sin theta 
so this and this gone from here theta 1 comes out to be theta 3 it means that if it is going in this direction and if this is the path if the refracted ray becomes incidence ray incidence ray becomes refracted ray that is what principle of reversibility is so that's how you need to say so this is it now let's go to another topic let's finish it fast so that at least we can solve some six seven eight questions that should be more than sufficient um, now the another uh, topic is huh, so refraction through glass slab so refraction through glass slab is uh, what type of question would be asked so the type of question which would be asked from here is that uh, what is this lateral shift so lateral why there is lateral shift because look at here if this angle is i and this angle is r for this refraction now this line is 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 coming here this refracted ray and 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 this mn and this m dash n dash here or this n n dash and m m dash are parallel to each other because they are perpendicular to a uh, parallel surface so this angle and this angle would be equal if this angle and this angle is equal then this angle and this angle would be equal how because if it is mu1 sin i1 here so this is what mu2 sin r1 and this is equal yes, this sir. and this so if this is mu2 sin r1 here then what it would be it has to be equal to mu1 sin i1 because it is constant so this angle and this angle is equal it means that incidence ray and refracted ray are making same angle with th this normal it it means that this incidence ray if i am retracing like this and this refracted ray they are parallel to each other with just certain lateral displacement so what would be this lateral displacement you will you may have to calculate this this is what the question which can come from here or the easiest question that would come from this topic is that they will tell you that with the help of suitable diagram or neat diagram uh, show the refraction through rectangular slab that's it and they will not they will not ask you to derive the formula of lateral displacement so look at the question read the question very carefully and then try to answer the question if derivation of lateral displacement has not been asked don't derive it most of the times uh, uh, you will never be asked uh, no. what is uh, lateral displacement uh, i mean how to derive lateral displacement you will be asked what is lateral displacement derivation will never be asked yes some question was coming please go ahead and put it forward somebody was so asking you, me certain question uh, so could you retell what what lateral displacement is okay i am saying that if there is no slab then this is the incident ray yes or no Oh, this yes, incident ray will move in fp direction see here p is given and here f is given so this incident ray if there is no glass slab will go in fp direction like this this dotted line is it okay but because there is a glass slab and light is going from denser medium to rarer medium this light ray will change its path and will come nearer to the normal so see here if this is the incident ray refracted ray is coming nearer to the normal now this refracted ray will go and strike with the second surface and here the light is coming from denser medium to rarer medium hence the light will go away from the from the normal so this light is nothing but final refracted light and this dotted line is nothing but actual or original direction of the incident ray so it in this phenomenon it is seen that the final refracted light is at certain distance from the it from the original direction of incident ray and distance the perpendicular distance between these two rays the incidence ray the original direction of incidence ray and the final refra refracted ray is known as lateral displacement are you understanding yes or no yes sir any doubt no, sir. tell me okay 
so look at here there is one question which is asked that what are the different factors on which the lateral displacement depends so uh, lateral displacement is nothing but you look at here you draw this line here let me calculate it this is 90 degree <coughs> and this if this is the thickness t so uh, i write that cos r is equal to this o o dash sorry this suppose this is um, x so o x divided by o o dash so o o dash is equal to o x by cos r and o x is nothing but your thickness so t by cos r and this complete angle is i and this angle is r so this angle here is i minus r so in this triangle o o dash and l triangle o um o l o dash and 90 degree at l if this is lateral displacement y so this is a right angle triangle sine i minus r is equal to o dash l divided by this line o o dash so o dash l is nothing but y which is lateral displacements and o o dash is nothing but t by cos r so y is equal to t by cos r sin i minus r which is nothing but t secant r sin i minus r now the motive of deriving this particular formula for you is so that you don't mug up or you don't get confused that why what i am saying about the factors on which <laughs> the lateral displacement depends the lateral displacement y depends on t what is t thickness of the slab it depends on r what is r refractive index uh, because r will depend on refractive index you know that mu1 sin i is equal to mu2 sin r so i can write that sin r is equal to mu1 by mu2 sin i and r can be written as sin inverse mu1 by mu2 sin i so r will actually depend on angle of incidence and refractive index so it depends on t it depends on refractive index mu and it also depends on angle of incidence i so lateral displacement will depend only on three factors which are your t mu and i is it okay yes no so this is about lateral displacement now let's go to real and apparent depth and measurement of normal shift the formula is very clear the refractive index index of the medium this medium so if this is medium 2 and this is medium 1 so mu 2 with respect to 1 is equal to real depth what is the real depth suppose an object is here now if my eye is here original ray is not reaching my eye refracted ray is reaching my eye hence i will not see this object where it is actually placed i will see this object where the image of this object is getting found so that is why there is a difference between and it only happens in case of um, in case of uh, try to understand in case of when it is going from rarer medium to sorry denser medium to rarer medium why because if it is not going because the light ray will go away from the normal hence this image would be formed above this particular uh, object if it is going from rarer to denser medium then it the refracted ray would be something like this and this will meet this line somewhere here which is not possible so you'll never be able to see the image so this is only possible when it is going from rarer medium to denser uh, sorry denser medium to rarer medium because the refracted rays goes away from the normal hence 
the image is formed above the particular object like this as it has been displayed displayed in this particular figure so the refractive index of the medium depends on uh, of the medium is real depth divided by apparent depth so apparent depth can be written as real depth divided by mu so this depth is nothing but h by mu then somebody asks you what is the vertical shift so this is the depth is always taken from the surface top surface vertical shift would be taken from the object so if this height is 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 if this depth is h and this apparent depth is h by mu the vertical shift shift would be h minus h, h by mu you take h common 1 minus 1 by mu so vertical shift is h multiplied by 1 minus mu what is vertical shift shift in the position of the object not object where the image is formed so where it is formed distance between the object and the image is vertical shift h 1 minus 1 by mu <coughs> and apparent depth is nothing but depth from the top of the surface which is h by mu so please remember these thing i have explained it pretty clearly questions are asked from this topic regularly only you need to write Sir, formula. Sorry. Could you explain vertical shift again? What this is your apparent depth h by mu. Vertical shift is distance between image and the object. So which is nothing but if this is h, so distance between image and object would be h divided by h minus mu, which is h one minus one by mu. Vertical shift is nothing but where actually I am where the object is visible to me object is visible to me in the form of image So where that image is formed above the object so distance between object and image is nothing but vertical shift Is it fine? Okay, next topic is lens lens you just need to know these uh, six things Cartesian sign remains same important terminologies uh, remain same center of curvature and, and focal point and all those things nature and position of image I have gathered here so these are the six different uh, uh, points this is for convex lens and at infinite we know that it will be on the focus then highly diminished real and inverted actually this is something convex lens is uh, equivalent to concave mirror so you see here in five cases it is real and inverted uh, this will also be uh, similar when the object is between focus and the pole then inverted image is getting formed uh, sorry virtual image is fit, getting formed which is enlarged in this particular position so if you remember one and you have a little bit of idea about how the things are getting done then you will probably be able to solve these things uh, for uh, concave mirror it's something like this so uh, there are two cases as it was in case of convex mirror so if it is at infinite you will have virtual erect, erect and highly diminished uh, which will which will be a point side between infinite and 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 um, optical center o you will have diminished virtual erect image which will be something like this here so this is it now i have derived the formula for mirror so lens formula is similar you have 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f please remember in case of mirror formula it was 1 by v plus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f lens formula is 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f now magnification is height of image divided by height of object so height of image you see here it is negative so minus hi divided by ho and that is equal to v by u here so v is positive and u is negative so from both side negative negative gone m comes out to be hi by ho that is equal to v by u so that's the formula in case of mirror it was minus v by u and what is power of lens now a lot of people do mistake here power of lens is nothing but 1 divided by 
फोकल लेंथ इन मीटर्स सो ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दैट दीज फोकल लेंथ वाई मीटर सेंटीमीटर इज रिक्वायर्ड बिकॉज इफ यू टेक इट इन सेंटीमीटर द फॉर्मूला बिकम्स हंड्रेड बाई एफ सेंटीमीटर सो इफ फोकल लेंथ हैज बीन गिवन टू यू एटी सेंटीमीटर डोंट जस्ट राइट वन बाई एटी एंड एंड राइट द फॉर्मूला इज पॉइंट वन बाई एट दैट इज पॉइंट जीरो वन टू फाइव डायोप्टर्स सो इट इज रिटर्न बाई कैपिटल डी सो यूनिट ऑफ पावर इज डायोप्टर विच इज रिटर्न एज कैपिटल डी सो डोंट मेक दिस मिस्टेक एप सीन एप चेक लॉर्ड ऑफ कॉपीज एप सीन लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल डूइंग दिस मिस्टेक दे डोंट रियलाइज दैट द फोकल लेंथ हैज बीन गिवन इन सेंटीमीटर्स इफ इट हैज बीन गिवन इन सेंटीमीटर्स राइट इट हंड्रेड बाई द फोकल लेंथ इन सेंटीमीटर इफ नॉट देन राइट इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ मीटर्स विच इज वन बाई फोकल लेंथ इन मिरर इन मीटर सॉरी sorry yes so the focal length for a convex lens will be positive right yes this is the focal length so for convex lens this focal length is positive for concave lens because it goes like this so the focal length would be negative so also okay let me add here also don't forget sign convention here so if it is a concave lens put f in negative and say that the power is negative or if somewhere power has been given to you as negative you have to understand that the question is asked about concave lens if power has been given as positive you have to understand that the question has been asked about convex lens now let me go to another uh, topic what is total internal reflection now total internal reflection is nothing but you look at here um suppose this is the refracting surface and um, here i have the so look at here suppose this is denser medium and this is rarer medium and this is incidence angle i and this is the refractive uh, angle of refraction r why i am taking incident angle in dense uh, incidence uh, ray in denser medium is that total internal reflection is only possible when the light rays goes from denser medium to rarer medium why because only in that case r would be greater than i so i know that mu1 sin i is equal to mu2 sin r now sin i by sin r is equal to mu2 by mu1 now if if it is suppose this is rarer so this would be denser first case so rarer means mu1 is lesser than mu2 so it means that if mu2 is greater than mu1 it will be greater than 1 it is greater than 1 means sin i is greater than sin r it means that i is greater than r if i is greater than r it means that uh, the refracted ray is going towards the normal in another case when mu1 is greater than mu2 so sin i by sin r would be less than 1 it means that sin r is greater than sin i and r is greater than i it means that the refracted ray is more than i more than incident ray. Uh, refracted angle is or angle of refraction is more than angle of incidence hence it is going away from the normal now what will happen in that particular case is that at certain angle this uh, at certain angle of incidence this r will become 90 and that is called condition of total internal reflection now if a light ray you understand or you think that when a light ray goes from rarer medium to denser medium r can never be 90 because for r to be 90 i has to be greater than 90 because in case of rarer to denser i is greater than r 
if r is more than 90 i if r is 90 i has to be more than 90 which is not possible i more than 90 that you are going in the another medium this is becoming like this i more than 90 that it is going in the another medium not a possible case so it is only possible when the light rays goes from denser to rarer medium because total internal reflection is a condition when the refracted ray or sorry angle of refraction becomes 90 degree or refracted ray is parallel to the surface for this i can write that mu1 sin i is equal to mu2 sin r when r becomes 90 degree that incidence angle is known as ic critical angle so mu1 sin ic is equal to mu2 sin 90 is equal to 1 so i'm not writing that now i can write that sin r uh, or let me write here sin ic is equal to mu2 by mu1 so ic is equal to sin inverse mu2 by mu1 that is the case of total internal reflection so critical angle is the angle of incidence for which ref, angle of ref, refraction is equal to 90 degree which means that it is parallel to the refracting surface also if i becomes more than 90 degree then ang, angle of refraction will become sorry i becomes more than ang, critical angle r becomes more than 90 degree and in that particular case the refracted ray will keep on coming to the same medium something like this so that is uh, uh, only called total internal reflection so this is the concept of total internal reflection i have given you the uh, um, relation between refractive index and critical angle uh, it, one of its application is optical fibers so if communication signals have to be sent to the far off distance it's actually sent through the optical fiber in which signals are con uh, in the forms of wave they are uh, total internal reflection happens and it, it travels through a longer distance so that's the case now let's go to another topic okay so solve this question now questions solve this question quickly Quickly solve this question. Have you done? Let me know. Once you are done, let me know. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, Uh, answer to this particular question is here so see how you have to write the answer if the image formed by a spherical mirror for all positions of the object placed in front of it is always erect and diminished what type of mirror is it important keyword over here is always erect and diminished in case of concave mirror it is not always erect and diminished it is only in one case that it is always erect and diminished which is in case of concave mirror when object is placed between the pole and the focal point in case of convex mirror it is always erect and diminished hence i need to write that convex mirror always forms erect and diminished image i need to make a neat diagram of the convex mirror to support your answer actually when i will have to make i'll make make both the images here only one image has been formed so i'll make both the images and i'll say that when it is parallel so it it the um, virtual erect and highly diminished image is formed at the focal length and when it is between infinite and pole anywhere then a diminished erect and virtual image is formed like this so and that's how you need to write now when you are writing the uh, size nature uh, size and nature of the image you definitely write this very uh, prominent manner so that it is visible to the examiner because they look at the keywords so if you don't write virtual erect diminished your marks would be deducted so write it properly okay next question just write it do the second question Second question, let me know. I have just done it.
second question and write it in a sense that you are writing you are actually writing uh, your examination so quickly write it so that all the keywords at least all the keywords are covered and then i will identify the keywords for you and you can probably uh, match your answer when i am discussing the keyword for this answer have you done it okay so now i am discussing the answers the two law of refraction are incident ray refracted ray and normal are these three are keywords here and point of incidence lie in same plane so this you have to write same plane which is very very important and ratio of sine of angle of incident to the sine of angle of refraction at a point in a medium is constant absolute refractive index if you don't make a diagram of this incident ray and refracted ray like this and you don't write mu1 mu2 marks would be deducted if this is a three marker you have to make this diagram if you don't make it some mark would be deducted here and there always remember if you draw a neat diagram of any any anything even if one one or two words here and there there is a mistake you will get marks absolute refractive index it is the ratio of speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in the given medium i have already discussed it with you so this this is second question third question just do it question number 3 let me know the answer power of the lens is nothing but measure of convergence and divergence of the lens if anywhere this question is coming you need to write power of lens is measure of convergence or divergence of the lens excuse me sir yes sir in our exam like according to our school we uh, i like write, wrote something similar to that and ma'am did not give me marks and she told we have to write power is the reciprocal of focal length so what should we do what should we write in the board exams uh, so the what question should we like write this? in the board exam power is first line i have written second line you have to write that power of the lens is defined as a reciprocal of focal length in meter is it okay so then you need to write p is equal to 1 by f the first line convergence or divergence measure of convergence or divergence and then is defined as a reciprocal of the focal length measured in meters and p is equal to 1 by f these three lines would be complete answer you will get the answer you will get the marks anyone checks you will get the marks thank you sir okay next one have you done this question no sir give us two more minutes okay
have you um, okay take one more minute Okay, enough time for this question. Look at here. The power of a lens is measure of degree of convergence or divergence of light falling on it. It is also defined as reciprocal of its focal length in meters. And then you need to write that P is equal to 1 by F. And here you in bracket you need to write meters. This is the complete answer. Then you need to write that the SI unit of power is diopter. Then you need to go to this question. A student uses a lens of focal length 40 centimeter and another of minus 20 centimeter. Find the nature and power of each lens. So focal length first it has been given in centimeters. So 40 by 100 is equal to 0.4 meters. So P is equal to 1 by F. 1 by 0.4 is equal to plus. 0.25 diopter. Now you look at here, even if the answer is positive, there is a positive sign used here purposefully. Please don't forget to use this positive sign. So whenever you are writing power, write power either with positive or negative sign. If it is a positive number, don't forget the positive sign there, additional positive sign. And when it is 20 centimeters, so it is nothing but uh, 1 divided by uh, 0.2 and a negative here so which gives me minus 5 uh, diopters. So if you have to write the nature of the length because the focal length is positive it is convex lens and because the focal length is negative it is concave lens. Yes any doubt? There is no question asked so I am not replying it. If you have any particular question just write it. I will Yes, you have to write both the definition. Always write proper definition. Don't leave anything on the wish of the examiner. Suppose an examiner wants to know that whether you know or not the uh, divergence and convergence point. Perhaps he can deduct the marks. If examiner wants only 1 by F and if you have written 1 by F, he, you will get the mark. So add everything, write unit, everything should be written. That is why I am time and again focusing on key keywords. Solve this question. Have you done this question? Okay, so look at the answer here. Oh, let me solve for you. An object is placed at a distance 30 cm from the concave lens of focal length 15 cm. List four characteristics of the image formed by lens. So concave lens, lens formula is 1 by V minus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F. Now this is nothing but First of all, I have to find V. So 1 by V minus 1 by U. U is always negative because it's on the left hand side divided by 1 by F. For concave lens, it is minus 15. So 1 by V plus 1 by 30 is equal to minus 1 by 15. So 1 by V is equal to uh, minus 1 by 30 minus 1 by 15 which gives me 30 this is nothing but 
minus 1 and this is nothing but minus 2. So this is nothing but minus 3 divided by 30 which gives me minus 1 by 10. So V comes out to be minus 10. Now I know that V is minus 10 it means that it is virtual in nature. Position is minus 10 centimeter on the left hand side of the con concave lens 10 centimeter from the optical center. Now size of so what is size hi but size has object size of the object has not been given but you can you can find magnification so you can write that hi by ho would be equal to minus v divided by minus u both gone so it will be 10 divided by 30 which will which is 1 by 3 so you can see that hi is equal to ho by 3 it means that image would be diminished image would be diminished and one third would be diminished and one third of of the total so that's the case of the or of the size of the object so that's how you have to write it so this was the answer for this question. Let's solve one more question before we finish the session and this PPT would be available to you pretty soon. So all the PPTs along with other materials would, would be uploaded by so see V is minus 10 centimeter image is virtual erect size of image is from diminished from 10 centimeter. Now solve this question and then then probably we'll stop. Have you done this question? Okay, so I have given you two minutes for this question, which is more than enough. Now you look at here. If the image formed by lens for all positions of object placed in front of it is always erect and diminished, you know that it is a concave lens. So you need to write that it is a concave lens. Draw a ray diagram to justify it. You have drawn the ray diagram to justify it. P is equal to 1 by F. So this particular part uh, P is equal to or power has been given as 10 diopter numerical value of the power has been given that is why it has been taken as positive so because it is asking you that what kind of lens so it can't give you the power of lens positive or negative so F is equal to 1 by P so you can write that 1 by 10 and 10 is equal to 0.1 meter but once you are writing your answer write that a negative has been inserted to to uh, show that the focal length belongs to the concave lens Con uh, focal length belongs to the concave lens so p is equal to minus 0.1 meter or you can convert it into centimeter and write minus 10 centimeter 
so that's the answer to this particular question now uh, uh, this slide along with other questions would be available to you in next next two days so this is all from me uh, uh, in in the chapter light reflection and refraction i hope you understood these things i am available for doubt clarification by any one of you on your groups personally or uh, if you have my number you can you can um, send me a message so any particular doubt related to the chapter can be clarified later also what i would advise you is that once you have done this chapter go to your book open your book start revising solve few questions from there and also the questions which i would be uploading in 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 in, in a day or two and and it will be informed to you in 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 your groups so uh, what i want you to do is to write few questions to write few uh, theoretical questions answer of theoretical questions to so solve few questions so that once we have revised it if you do self revision at home it will it will clarify your concepts better it will make you better prepared for your examination anyway your pts are going on we are conducting tests so different tests would be uh, i mean we would be conducting tests so different tests are coming your way and you will have to write these things in your tests also in the coming time in next next 10 15 days so once you are done with these things uh, this pro particular chapter which which cover up good amount of questions in 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 physics portion of the science paper will be very very beneficial to you so i will recommend self revision uh, revise it in, in maybe today tomorrow whenever you have times write few theoretical questions solve few numericals and if any doubt get in touch with us thank you so much thank you from uh, my side for attending this class and uh, i hope i was able to do justice to your time So thank you so much and uh, wish you all the best thank you